every great UI library has a website. The purpose of the website is not only to show off the components, but is also to show off how these components are used. And in my case, you'd think, oh, I just have a button. Well, there's no real point to having a UI website, but you'd be wrong because I'm trying to procrastinate as much as possible and to put off actually making any UI components for as long as possible. And in the spirit of doing as little as possible to make a website, I'm going to be using a library called Storybook JS. Storybook JS is a great way of isolating components of your project so that you can demo them as well as test them. You can do simple stuff like take a look at how your typography renders. You can show checkboxes. Well, in this case, not working, but I can adjust that like this. You can show your components working, interact with components, and this way you can know whether or not your components are actually working in isolation. Storybook has so many features and is so flexible. The amount of things you could do is just immense. I'm going to take you through the very basics of how Storybook is installed so you can get it set up on your project. So first thing we're going to do is do npx sb init paste. Now, if I remember correctly, this takes quite a while. And that's because what it does is install the required dependencies, set up the necessary scripts to run and build Storybook, add the default Storybook configuration, and add some boilerplate stories to get you started. I forget how boring it is when everything is automated for you. Mmm, still going? Mmm, still going. Oh, done. All right, now it's saying that We've detected you're not using our ESLint plugin in order to have the best experience with Storybook blah, blah, blah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Found an ESLint RC config file with an unsupported auto migration format, JSON. Well, clearly that's a problem and we'll need to update that. All right, refactor, rename, ESLint RC. Oh wait, do I need to have CJS? Done, oh, but of course we have to export this. And this is how you use the ESLint plugin. And we'll put it right at the bottom, right here. All right, let's see what they added. They got a NPM script for Storybook and building Storybook, as well as a few more dependencies, Babel loader, a plugin, and apparently ESLint didn't like the order of this, so it just changed it. So let's run that uh, Storybook command. NPM run Storybook. Okay, it's doing some error. Oh no, React DOM package JSON. We're missing React DOM. That's strange. Uh, let me just fix that quickly. All right, that's done. Let's try this again. All right, building modules. So far, so good. And there we go. Look at that. We have our own Storybook page, but it's not really our own because it doesn't have any of our components. It's got these random, these are not my buttons, it's somebody else's button. Well, that's because not only did they install this storybook directory, but they also added some stories and put some CSS and some pages that I didn't create. So of course, the next step is to clean up all the stuff that they put into my project and then put my own project into Storybook. First thing is, I don't like the fact that the stories are in the source folder because I don't want the stories to be part of the source. It's something that is in addition to it. Now that I think of it, source is actually probably not the best name for this folder anyways because it's not something that's going to be compiled into like a distribution folder or a build folder. It's just going to be released as is. So I'm going to make a new folder called lib or libs. Keeping everything plural, I know, controversial. And then I'll move stories into the root folder and then rename my old folder libs. And now a quick thing that I need to change is that the stories are no longer in libs, they're in stories. So we have to do that. Stories. There we go. I don't know what this is. This preview.js file is, so I'm going to leave it alone. This is all good still. Stories right now doesn't have any dependency on my actual library, so I know I don't need to change anything there. Yes, lint. Good. Package.json. Already changed. Perfect. Maybe call this libs. And tsconfig already, yes. Updated to be libs. But stories are also tsx files, so I should include that as well. Stories. And that's done. Now if we restart our storybook instance, everything should be good. Just doing some building. There we go. Good. Back to normal. Very cool. Now it's time for removing everything that I don't need and putting my own stuff in its place. All right. This assets folder, delete it. All these CSS files, delete. And because these TSX files I'm going to be using my own, I don't need those either. And right now I only have a button component, so I'm going to delete these but these other components. And we also have this introduction MDX file, and I know I don't need any of this. Let me change this to Caradian. Delete this and delete all that. And I'll say something like, this is my storybook. 
And of course, because I'm not using this button anymore from here, I need to import my own button. So I need to do that. Oh, apparently I need to set my module resolution option to node. So I'll add that really quick. Boom, it's happy now, yay. We wanna import our own button and we wanna get it from libs. There we go. And we don't have any of these other options, so we're just gonna have a primary button. And after running Storybook, we see that I have my primary button, which is, it just has that green background. And because these are the args that are actually passed to the button, my button really doesn't take any arguments other than children. So if, if I set the children to be button, I can see that, yep, that's exactly what happens. And it looks like I can fill it in to be whatever I want. And if I go into my styled component and I change this color to be coral, and if I flip back over to my website, it looks like, yep, there you go, background update to coral. Hmm, looks like this background color attribute isn't linked to it, but I think that's related to this thing here from our preview.js file. Now in following videos, I will show how to create stories with Storybook and to show off and test your own components. But for now, let's take a look at a really good example of how powerful Storybook can be. Storybook has a showcase page where it has a whole bunch of different projects and some of them from pretty recognizable companies <laughs> like the UK government or Shopify, Salesforce, Storybook themselves. So this is an example from Audi where you have a few different radio buttons. You can have the different combinations like uh, checked, error, error, checked, disabled, etc. And you can also play with the component yourself. You can even set the hint string here. And here's one from a, a UI library called Gromit. And they have an example of the code here. They've got a calendar component where you can even pick the date and here's another great example from a company called Reaviz, which does data visualization. You have like an area chart, you have some bubble charts, pie chart, a Sankey plot, scatter plot. And at the bottom, they have an example demo using code sandbox. <laughs> Look at that, so beautiful and so convenient. We've seen other libraries use this code editing thing as part of Storybook, but you're not tied to Storybook. You could do it in whatever way that you like. I think Storybook is a great way for small UI libraries to get a head start on creating a website that demos co their components as well as is a useful tool for testing component. Now, what is the next step in this process? Is it to actually make a component library? No. The next step in the process is to upload this website so that everyone can enjoy it with this one component. <laughs>